Hi there. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use this tool here, which is called the radial arm saw. When you're using the radial arm saw, there's a few precautions you need to take. So if you're wearing a long dangly sweater, you wanna make sure that the sleeves are nicely rolled up or better yet, just take it off. Make sure that you're not wearing any like dangly jewelry or bracelets or long necklaces, that your earbuds are out. Uh, you wanna be wearing eye protection for sure. And the radial arm saw gets really, really loud, so you want to be wearing your ear protection. The radial arm saw essentially has a thing called a carriage, which you hold like this, and it rolls back and forth. The carriage over here can be locked, so when it's tightened, I can't pull the carriage forward. And when I loosen it, I can pull the carriage forward, and it travels along this path over here. The radial arm saw is perfect for taking long pieces of wood and chopping them into smaller pieces lengthwise. That's called cross cutting. What the radial arm saw is bad for and you should not use the radial arm saw for is something called rip cutting. And that essentially is taking a piece of wood and making it narrower like this. So you should never be using the radial arm saw to cut something like this. If you want to rip cut, which means cut along this way, you should use a different tool for that. So now that we know what the radial arm saw kind of does, let's talk about the things that you can and cannot cut. Now it goes without saying, please don't try to cut metal with the radial arm saw. This is a wood shop and this is a woodworking tool, but there's a few other things that you can't actually there's a few other things that you can actually cut. And the first and most important rule is actually written right in front of the machine. And I'm going to focus on it for you right over here. And so it says right over here, hey, stop. Wood must be at least 12 inches long before you use the radial arm saw. And I've actually drawn out what 12 inches looks like. So if you're not sure, you can take the piece of wood and go, all right, 12 inches. This is safe to use. This, not so much. The reason behind all of this is because you want to keep your hands at least six inches away or 15 centimeters away from either sides of the blade. And so to help you out is that I've kind of drawn out a no hand zone. And so again, you don't want to put your hand in this box over here. If the piece of wood is shorter than 12 inches, you will find that your hands will be in the no hand zone. When you are cutting, it is best to make sure that your hands are as far away from the blade as possible and far away from the no hand zone. So holding the piece of wood, if I'm cutting, I should hold it like this and probably not in the no hand zone. And the second rule is that you should not be cutting round stock on the radial arm saw. So although this is definitely longer than 12 inches, we can't cut round stock because it's rolling out and about. And what we're afraid of is that this blade will catch and send this flying. Only pieces that won't roll around and lie flat on the table, like this one or this one, are good for the radial arm saw. If you want to cut round dowel, you'll need a V-block and you'll have to do it on the bandsaw. And finally, you want to be mindful. You don't want to accidentally cut into metal. So if you see nails there, pull them out before you cut them. Or better yet, just don't cut into a nail. Now, when you're using the radial arm saw, we have this wooden block that exists on this side and this side over here. This allows you to take a piece of wood, put it right up against it, and it keeps it nice and supported. This ledge thing is called the fence. So when you are using the radial arm saw, you always want to take the piece of wood and make sure it's well rested up against the fence. So if I'm cutting this here, I want to make sure this piece of wood is up against the fence as I cut. What you don't want to do is just have this piece chilling out and I'm holding it like this as I'm cutting. The piece of wood must be up against the ledge or the fence, like this. So we talked about this knob over here, which is called the carriage lock. We've talked about this, which is the handle, and the blade is in the carriage. Um, the on and off switch are up here. The lockout switch, so the way that you would unplug this 
is over here. So right now, if I flip it in the locked out position, and I try to turn this on, it won't turn on. However, once I flip this switch up, it's plugged in. If I turn it on, it will cut. And right down here is our emergency switch. If you sense that something is going wrong, you can actually just bump it with your hip. However, uh, it's also inconveniently located. So sometimes you might accidentally bump into it when you don't want to. If you accidentally tap it, there's a little arrow here. All you need to do is just twist it and this will pop out and then you can turn the machine on. If this is bumped in, the machine won't turn on. One thing to be aware of about the radial arm saw is that the blade, this thing here, has a tendency to want to pull itself ahead towards you. And it has a tendency to roll forward and cut everything that's in its path. So one of the rules of thumb to make sure that this doesn't cut anything that you don't want to, you should make sure that this doesn't roll forward before you turn the machine on. Once this is unlocked, you should always, always, always keep your hand on the handle. And your hand will be on the handle when you make your cut. And your hand still needs to be on the handle when you're done your cut. And your hand can't leave this handle until this lock is tightened and you know that it won't roll forward. What you're afraid of is that you make your cut and then when you're not ready or you're not expecting it, because this is unlocked, this is going to roll forward and cut everything in, the, in its path. And in, the, in a bad scenario, you wreck your project. In your worst case scenario, you cut yourself. So the rule of thumb is, if this is unlocked, your hand needs to be on that carriage. You can only let go when this carriage lock is locked and that this will not roll forward. Whether the machine is on or off, it doesn't matter. If this is unlocked, your hand needs to be on the handle. I can't stress that enough. Before you cut, take some time and plan what you're going to do. What I mean by that is figure out how you're gonna hold this piece of wood in such a way that your hands are as far away from the blades as possible and that your hands are not in the no hand zone. So for example, I wanna hold it like this, that's fine. I could also, hold it and cut it like this, that's fine too, because both, in either cases, both of my hands are in the no hand zone. What you definitely don't want to do is cross your hands. So let me show you what I mean. Yeah, don't do this. Uh, and you might be laughing now because if you cut and you start to cut, once it's done cutting the wood, your uh, arms are gonna be in the line of cut here, and that's not gonna end well for you. So I'm going to cut like this. Let's start our first cut. Make sure your eye protection's on. Make sure your ear protection's on. And now again, as I mentioned before you turn it on, make sure that the carriage lock is tightened, that this isn't going anywhere. Next, I'm going to turn the machine on, left hand on the carriage, I'm going to unlock this lock, and then now I need to hold the wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch hands, keep my other hand, hold it over here, and then I'm going to make my cup. So I'm going to go real slow. Don't grab that piece in there yet. And now remember, I want to lock this first. So I'm going to switch hands. I'm gonna lock this so this doesn't accidentally roll forward. And then I'm gonna turn it off. Even though I've turned the machine off, you can still see that the blade is spinning which means I don't want to reach in there and grab that off cut. You want to wait for the blade to come to a complete stop. That might take a little bit of time, but that's okay.
All right. Notice how I can actually see the individual teeth now that the blade is no longer spinning. At that point, I can just take my piece of wood and knock my off cut out of the way. All right, so let's see this the other way. This time, I'm gonna hold it like this. And I'm gonna use my left hand to hold it like this. That's acceptable too. So again, make sure this is locked. Good. Turn it on. Keep your left hand on the carriage. Unlock the handle. Now that the carriage is unlocked, my hand is super glued to the handle. Then make your cut. Now my hand is still super glued to the handle, so I'll lock the, hand, lock the knob. Now the carriage isn't going anywhere. Good, I can let go. I'm gonna turn it off. And I'm gonna wait for that blade to stop spinning. So that's how you do one-off cuts. Sometimes you'll need to cut pieces so that they're all exactly the same length. So pretend I have these three pieces and I need to, and I need to cut them all so they're exactly the same length. So a student might logically go, okay, I'm gonna stack them up like this. I might even tape them. Uh, and I need them this distance over here, and they'll just hold it up to the fence like this, and they'll cut. And I want to tell you right now, you don't want to do that. If you're trying to create multiple pieces of the multiple length, stacking them up on the radial arm saw like this is really dangerous. Why? Because what you're afraid of is that you have all of these pieces that are unstable over the fence. And what can happen is as you're cutting, the blade might actually catch one of these pieces, and because that piece is not supported by this ledge, it could send this piece into the blade and your hand with it. So when you are cutting on the radial arm saw, you only want to be cutting one piece at a time. Cut this one, then move on to this one, then move on to this one. Never stack them. All right, and that's how you use the radial arm saw safely. If you want to learn how to make multiple pieces to the same length by cutting them on the radial arm saw, go and check out the link to another video in the description below. Thanks for watching.